to to get streaming about accessibility again and i was really tempted to uh to start streaming about semantics because i wrote a, a piece on semantics for uh dev.to so there's a, a nice bit of writing if you want to dive into semantics but then yesterday there was this yeah, notable event i guess uh, that the U.S. government uh, got a new president. Hope using the right terms. Is it the government that gets a president? I don't know. The United States got a new president. I think that's better. And with the new president came a new website. And this website, whitehouse.gov, um, it awoke some people. It got some feedback. And I thought, hey, let's look at how it's designed. Let's look at how inclusive the design is. So we're looking at accessibility, but also things that we could or should improve um, and who am I to talk about these things uh, my name is Eric Eric Kroos in Dutch uh, I am a accessibility specialist I do accessibility work at ING a large Dutch bank I am now their product owner of a design system and uh, I've also done some freelance work like auditing workshops all on the, the subject of accessibility so I hope I know a, a thing or two about this I see. Aha, I didn't even update the title. I just noticed stream stuff. I probably did something wrong. But I l at least we have sound this time, which is like a big improvement over the last two times when it went wrong. I think we've got that fixed now. But I'm not sure if we got the stream information correct. I'm just going to open Twitch in another tab. Because, hey, as a one-person production team, it doesn't always go right. I do see myself, so that's good. But how do we set the subject? Because it now says I'm still interviewing the person that I interviewed last week. And I can tell you one thing. We're doing something new. So I'm watching my second screen right now, and that's why you see me panning to the right oh and twitch is always such an issue to find what you're looking for probably on the dashboard somewhere stream manager that sounds good streaming tools nope Where do people change these things? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Good. So I guess that's a good start. If you're here, you're here. And if you're watching the recording, it doesn't matter anyway. So let's skip that part and let's look at a website. So this is the new White House website. And I'm going to check out the front page, of course, because everybody goes to the front page. At least that's the goal. Since a lot of people use search engines, that's not really the truth. But hey. Um, so we're going to look at the front page and I think there is a contact page. Forms are always interesting to look at, so we're going to check that out as well. And what do we have here? We have a name on the top left, it's a link. A logo on the top in the center, also a link with the same, same destination. Yeah, both to the main page. Then there's a menu with the administration priorities, COVID-19, briefing room, and Espanol. So there is a Spanish version. And then there's a menu, which I guess is supposed to look like a, uh, a White House, which is not very surprising. Hey, Akim, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Glad you can hear me this time, I hope. Um, so we've got a menu here, and it, I think it's supposed to look like a White House. And the good thing is it, it actually says a menu. So this is very good. We see a lot of websites with um, the, the famous or infamous hamburger menu, which is only a few horizontal lines. 
and uh, well that's uh, almost a convention not everybody gets it so the fact that it says menu that's good and then there's this random search button below Ooh. and it's it has a placeholder but no visual label okay we'll get to that later i'm just going for first impressions so this is what we got we got a big image then to the left there is a button toggle high contrast and toggle large font size these are so-called accessibility options people like to add these because it gives them a sense of security i guess um, then we have this rotated text here get the leaders from the white house you can follow them on facebook and on twitter learn more about the administration I'm guessing that's the same stuff that we get up here. I guess it's also called the administration. Just going to check it out real quick. And then indeed we get some people. So we've got the president, vice president, first lady, second gentleman, the cabinet, and the executive office of the president. No image there yet. Don't know if there's going to be an image. Maybe they still, they still need to be higher. You don't know. Um, so back to the front page, and you see indeed the, the, the president, the vice president, the cabinet. So some of the names are repeating. So when talking about the administration, they're talking about the same thing. That's a good thing. They're consistent. Then history of the White House, about the White House, previous presidents. Oh, we've got a gonna scroll here we got an overview of all presidents from the past all of them one by one all up to Barack Obama Donald Trump and Joseph R Biden jr. and only the one about the current president leads to another subfolder so all of them are about the White House slash presidents and only uh, Mr. Biden goes to administration slash President Biden. Okay. And then we have another one, another section. This is for newsletter sign up, I guess. It doesn't say. There's this the White House image. It's not the same as it, the text at the top or the other one at the top. Um, and there's stay connected and you can enter an email address in a form in the zip code and you can sign up I wonder if I can sign up uh, if I can sign up without a zip code huh, that's interesting okay so we've got our first interesting situation here I mean, I'm just scanning the page, so there's there's a lot of things to say. I, I spotted some stuff already that we can look at. Um, but let's start at this. So there's a form here where I can enter an email address and a zip code. And it says sign up. I don't see what I'm signing up for. So there are like no instructions, no motivation, no information, no nothing. Also interesting, I'm going to zoom in a bit more and we can see it Woo. even clearer. Uh, this one has a label, the left one, and the right one has a label as well. Yeah, you can click it even, it's connected to the, uh, to the input, because I click it and the focus is in the input, so that's good. But at the left input there is a small star. And this is a sort of convention that I find rather interesting, because we used to have books, like these old paper things, and a lot of designers started with books and paper things. And then if you had a star, it would be a footnote. You know, it would point to something else. Um, you also had it in a lot of commercial flyers and stuff. You would have a star, it says only four ninety nine, and then there was a little star, and then at the bottom it said, it had the star again and told you what was missing when you paid that price. Um, so it's meant to be a reference but here it's email address star and the star doesn't return anywhere um, I've seen this happen a few times before I think it means that the email address is required okay 
but it's not explained. I mean, you cannot guess from seeing a star that it is required. Um, there is something in the code though, which I already noticed is uh, if you go into the code, and I'm gonna scroll down the top window again as well, all the way down, uh, where is it here? In the code, uh, the input has an attribute called required. So it is in the code that it is required, but visually it's um, confusing because there's only this little star, the asterisk. But even more interesting, I fill this in. So I say, hey, this is a required field. The zip code is not a required field. Oh, and there's a comment. Well, let's not look at the comment right now. Um, the zip code has no stars, so you would expect the zip code is not required. But when I try to fill it, fill it in right uh, just now, it didn't let me. It didn't let me. There was no error or anything. I'll, I'll show you. And um, so when I press sign up, I only get this browser. How do you call it? This, this piece of browser information. It's in Dutch. It says fill in this field. So because there's a required attribute, so it's required in the code, um, it says that I should fill it in. So that's weird. So one has this little star asterisk thing going on and the other doesn't, but they're both required. Another strange thing is um, it has a, a hint on how to format it, but it's given with a placeholder. So I see, hey, my email address should be entered in the format of example at website.com. But if I type it and I start typing, the instructions go away. So I long, no longer know what the instructions are. And um, with the zip code, it's not an instruction. It's just a copy of the label. So placeholders, they're st strange little things. Um, they often give you instructions, like the first example, but they go away when you need them the most, when you're filling it in. The second one isn't even an instruction, and often these placeholders give color issues, like contrast issues. So I'm going to check it. This is this might be okay, but I got the uh, color contrast analyzer, which is a tool. Oh yeah. Hey, thanks for joining, Sophie. And uh, I noticed the contrast for the focus indicator on the form field isn't great. Yeah. Yeah, can't say much about it. It's like a vertical line and it's blinking, it's probably good enough. They didn't do too much to it, but this one is, the, the placeholder is blue on blue. So that's, um, I, I think that's gonna be even worse if it's gonna be enough. It could be enough. Sometimes it surprises you. I'm trying to pick the color now, which is asking the most from my motor skills. So the foreground color, the text color is uh, a blue tint. Oh, the actual focus style, I'll check that after this one. So here we go. Um, this thing has a placeholder, but the contrast ratio of the placeholder on the background is 3.1 to 1. Um, I think this is regular text. It's not extremely large or anything, or not bold either. So uh, it should be have a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 to 1. It does not. So you can assume that whatever is put into this field is uh, invisible for most people. So that's uh, a waste. Placeholders, they, they often have this issue because on one hand you want to make clear that th there's no text in the field because it can confuse people. They think, oh, there's already something in there. No, there's not. That's a placeholder. Um, but on the other hand, if you make it brighter, you want to make clear that it's not actual text, then you're going to run into contrast issues. So that's uh, that's what you get with placeholders. And that's the issue you see here, right here as well. So um, dear people of the Biden website, white uh, whitehouse.gov, um, remove the placeholder. That would be my advice. So. What could you do instead is, um, I'm just gonna do this. It's gonna be ugly, warning. I'm gonna edit this as an HTML just to give an impression what it could have been. So what could be is that you add a span, for example. Um, uh, and you give instructions. I'm not a, a, a writer, so this is 
up for improvement, but you could add a span something like uh, format like um, and then colon example at website.com slash slash span. So first we're gonna see what it looks like. Yeah, it's not gonna look good. So I'm not doing any CSS or anything, just uh, showing you how it could work. We're gonna put it inside. Oh, I'm trying to paste something in the code. What are you doing? Okay, I'm gonna type it again because apparently a keyboard is too much for me to control. So now there's a span in between. And, and of course, if you're a designer, you would say, hey, that span is a bit big. Uh, I don't know, you wanna decrease the font size somehow. You would probably do something like, I don't know, what's the font size now? Uh, something like this, or maybe even less, I don't know. But you should put some formatting outside of the input. Don't make it a, don't make it a placeholder because it doesn't help people when they actually need it. And then the second thing you can do is um, this placeholder, uh, no, not the placeholder, this formatting hint. Um, I'm gonna edit it as well, uh, or again, rather. S uh, I'm gonna give it an ID, just hint, because it doesn't matter what we call it, we just have it there for an example. And then what you can do with the input is you say aria described by is hint. So what you do now is um, quite important. I'll show you in the accessibility panel. When I inspect this element, oh, I gotta go to the accessibility tab first, that's smarter. So when I inspect this element, is this the, it's actually, yeah, this one it is. It says entry, is that the one? Yes. Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. Okay, so there's a text field and it has an accessible name as they call it. So um, let's say, what technology shall we pick today? Um, you use Dragon, naturally speaking. So you use voice commands to operate a website and you wanna put the focus inside this text field. Then you need to know the name of this text field. And the name of this text field is email address. This is visually clear because it's right on top of it, but it's also clear from the code because there was a relationship in the code between the label element and the input element. I've got a whole episode on accessible names. You can check it out. Well, we've got the example there, but this is like tip of the iceberg. Um, so this input has a name called, it's called email address. But besides the name, you can also add a description. So when you visit this with something like a screen reader, you have a piece of software that reads out what's on your screen it will say something like email address, input field, and then it starts write, uh, It starts reading out what the uh, description is, the area described by that we just did. And then it will say format like example at website.com. So you can give instructions like that. And they are linked to um, the input through the code. And I see we've got some more feedback. Accessibility statement is also interesting. You can only report issues via a phone call they'll hopefully add more approachable options later okay maybe we can uh, we can play this stream uh, through their phone then hey good evening jorge i mean i i assume good evening i think you're in a spanish time zone but not sure um yes yeah, sophie help text uh, not only visually associated but also programmatically that really makes a difference so that makes it usable for everybody and here the weird stuff is that zip code and just zip code so i'm just going to submit a fully filled in form field now. The classic zip code for me is 91210. That's Beverly Hills. It's probably the only zip code that I know. And I press sign up and what does it do? It says, thanks for signing up. So I don't know what the rules are in the United States when it's concerning privacy and what you do with information and such, but I just signed up for something it doesn't say what, it doesn't say how often, 
practically says nothing, but this was all that was needed to sign up. Um, it doesn't give any errors when it doesn't work. I bet also nothing. Just gonna check the sign up. Well, I'm gonna zoom out a bit again because we're missing some screen real estate here. So it just a diff. Thanks for signing up. Okay. Let's. Um, yeah, exactly. Is it a newsletter? Is it spam? Is there a difference? Uh, big questions to be asked. So what would be nice, for example, if this would, maybe they did it without us seeing it. They were really quick, but um, there's this div. What you could do, for example, is you could give this div um, aria live uh, an attribute and set it to a polite. So, Po po light like this. And then I have to click here to save it. Yeah. Why? Why would you do this? Well, if you first spawn a diff, you add this. They probably added this through JavaScript. It's usually JavaScript. You first add a diff, and then if it, the diff has uh, an area live attribute on it, it will announce whatever is added to the diff. So let's say you are browsing with a screen reader. Again, screen reader is a really great example because it's just a great way to test websites. And you use a screen reader, you say sign up, you activate that button, then there's this text showing up, thanks for signing up, but you don't see this because you're using a screen reader and it's not related to the button in any way. So you might press the button again and again and again because you don't know if it works. But if you have this div with Aria Live, then the text inside the div will be announced. So you press sign up and you will hear Thanks for signing up. And important is, is that a div is there before the text is loaded. Maybe it's different these days with technology updates, but um, there used to be, and I think there probably still are issues when you spawn the div with the text inside of it immediately. First the div, then the content. So that's uh, that's usually how it works. Um, and my question immediately is, this is some sort of gold text. I don't like the readability of this all caps text, but I'm I'm not as an expert on uh, dyslexia or anything. I, I think they could have done better there, but hey, that's um, it's apparently some fancy font that they used through the campaign as well. Um, oh yeah, and there we see it. Thanks for signing up. That message has a contrast ratio of uh, just below three to one. So even if this were big text, and I mean really large or really big and large and bold and everything. This is not large text, this is normal text, clearly normal text. Um, but if it were large text, it would require a contrast ratio of three to one, doesn't meet it. Um, it's not large text, so it should be at least 4.5 to one, even more contrast, and it doesn't meet that either. Can you also set the value of an element just like you can also set the name and description you mean like a placeholder like this? Or you mean the actual content? I mean, a form field can get a value. I mean, with JavaScript, you can touch pretty much anything. So I hope you can elaborate on that a bit. Um, but the core thing is this, this text here in gold on white, it's also like an impossible color combination. Uh, people are not able to read this. This is like really bad. Yeah, no. I, I can even imagine that people um, watching this, this recording, are uh, having some issues. And then I see in the chat that it was indeed about... Oh, I don't know why I scrolled there. Yeah, you can set the value. So, not sure if it shows up. I think there's... I, I've, I've done some stuff before with values and syncing them through JavaScript. I think there are some, uh, yeah, there are some things that work well and that don't work well. Um, I wouldn't preset the value. Don't, don't, don't play with it too much. I'm just gonna touch it anymore right now. Um, okay, so first thing that really stood out for us is this, uh, this maybe newsletter sign up, we don't know. Um, so I'm gonna make the website even smaller. See, this is like 
probably the mobile version. So they have these two buttons, toggle high contrast, which is actually more like a dark mode. It's not really high contrast, it's dark mode. And toggle large font size. And because they have these two things, they're gonna get exceptions for a lot of things. So let's see, for example, if I do toggle large font size and toggle high contrast, and now I go to the same form again. Um, it could be that the thanks for signing up message will be better now. So I'm gonna sign up again. Ooh, please, 9021. Oh, I want to. Please enter a zip code, five digits, okay. And now it's gold on black. So because the um, because the contrast is probably good enough when I enable high contrast, they're gonna get away with it because they say, hey, but we have an alternate version and that's high contrast. It means you have double the work. I, they could do without this silly widget. I mean, it, it's, I don't know much about um, American language around being inclusive, but I've seen the uh, the term virtue signaling. And I know in Dutch we also have something called greenwashing. And just the fact that they're showing this accessibility thing, um, it feels to me more like a symbolic action, like showing, hey, look at us, we're doing the whole accessibility thing, uh, than that it actually adds much. Because uh, toggle high contrast, people can set preferences in their browser or in their mobile browser or even in their mobile operating system. Um, you can support that if you wanna give high contrast and increasing the font size is something also that people can do. I just zoomed in right here. It's like on Windows, it's Control Plus. Control Plus zooms in and out. You don't need large font size for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm good that they have, uh, I'm happy that they have accessibility on the radar and that they find it important. But I would just make an accessible website by default and make sure that everybody can use it and not like add extra stuff to make it accessible, uh, to make it feel accessible because it doesn't add much. And I'm, I'm having some hard time formulating this. I'm a bit tired, which probably means we're gonna stream even longer than normal because I've got even more to tell. Um, but this widget is superfluous. I mean, they, they didn't need it. They should not have needed it. And um, it probably takes more time and effort than whatever it, it gives in value. Um, it looks like they based the high contrast on the Windows high contrast mode, which also has a black background with yellow outlines. Yeah, that's true. It, it could be very much like that. And you see they, they reuse some colors, so the gold stays. Um, but I wanna test two things now. First thing is the, the menu. Oh wait, no, there was something I tested before, which is interesting. I'm gonna press tab, just keyboard navigation. You know, if you... Uh, if you read my guide on how to test for inclusive design, it's called solidstart.info. It has some basic things you can test, and one of them is the keyboard. So I am now with my keyboard focus. Your keyboard, your keyboard can focus on things. I'm at the start of the page, and I'm gonna press tab once, and you see skip to content. So the first thing we have is a skip to content link. Um, I'm gonna see if it works. I'm gonna press enter, which should activate it, and I press tab again. And then where is my focus? Ah, there, okay, somewhere at the start. I don't know where it went before that, but my focus is somewhere at the start, so that's good. So we go back to skip to content, and when we press tab from there, we go to toggle high contrast, we go to toggle to large font size, um, and then I press tab again, and I don't know if anybody sees it, but I see nothing. I see no focus. I see no focus ring, never, anywhere, uh, nowhere. And I press tab again and it goes to the White House logo at the center top. So I guess the focus is on the White House link here in the left top, but I have no idea if it is. Um, visually, it's not clear. I can press enter. Yeah, and it reloads. So it probably was that link, but it means they have no focus styling. So this is a real issue. And um, a version with a bigger font size or higher contrast is not gonna save you with this one. Unless the higher contrast some somehow does have a focus state, but that would be strange. Um, the other thing I wanna test is the menu. 
I press enter, it's still on the close button, I press tab, and I think, oh yeah, it goes to the logo now, administration and to the arrow, the arrow is something that expands the submenu, so this is all pretty logical, it taps, it works, I can go into the submenu, I can close the submenu, I can go to the Spanish version, uh, contact us, privacy policy, copyright policy, maybe in the privacy policy we can read about the newsletter. Who knows? Mystery newsletter. Then we have these social media icons. And then I press tab again. I, I guess I'm out of it now. So, shift tab. I saw... No, I'm not out of it. Is this it? Okay, so I'm in YouTube, the last icon, and then press tab. And I go back to the top. Okay, so... I opened this website earlier and I was actually better prepared than usual because I, I try to inspect websites for the first time uh, or the first time I see them so not get too prepared and then then uh, I could tab out of this menu that's no longer the case so when I press tab it, it goes back into the menu so this real modal behavior uh, there are more things that make it a modal and they can be checked but in the base this is a real modal uh, modal behavior so that's good so what else do we have well i'm very curious about the search functionality so focus on the menu tab again focus on the search which is very hard to see but then again it's using the default focus state so if you look at it from a wake uh, perspective so you look at the actual guidelines this is not wrong but it's like very little effort here to make something more out of it i mean it's the white circle, it's a, it's a gray l magnifying glass on a yellow circle and it gets slightly larger, red, yellow, uh, no, a slightly larger white circle with a red magnifying glass and it has like this, I think it has a, a little dotted black outline. I mean, that's not very clear. And I press enter and then my focus is gone. I press tab again, I guess search something, I guess shift tab. Yeah, so the focus is gone when you open it. Again, a placeholder, so there's no visual label. It's also something that can be improved. And I press tab again, I can submit. So, okay, let, let's type something. I press enter, what happens? Search results for tests. Okay, for tests, always try tests. So the search functionality in general is pretty okay. Suddenly on the left side, there's this jump to top link. I'm not gonna test that. It's weird to have this only on this page and not on the front page. Uh, there's pagination on the bottom. So that's pretty good, but there are some is this is this has some stuff missing. And what if uh, it's a required field? What if I just uh, type T? Oh, I can even search a single letter. So I guess I get everything with a single letter in it. What if I pick a sign that they probably don't use? Tilt, maybe no results for tilt. Yeah, it seems we can't find what you're looking for on a new line. <laughs> have fun centering your text. Especially when you have large pieces of text, um, people who have issues reading text have even more issues when you uh, start centering things, so don't. Um, you can probably get away with this because it's only two lines, but I try to avoid behavior in general and just line it to one side then you know where a sentence ends and where the next one starts and you don't have to look for words and it makes easier reading for everybody um, so that's the search functionality I, I guess all in all the front page is pretty good I mean I, I wouldn't rotate text that doesn't increase readability and um, if you run X on this so that's an automated test I think it's gonna come out pretty good It says I can't scan it. Oh, there it is. It says there's one moderate issue. What's the moderate issue? All page content must be contained by landmarks. Okay, so they could improve their landmarks. Yeah. Could be worse. 
so all in all it looks pretty good we saw some uh, some small stuff um but it sounds pretty pretty usable um what i can do is uh, see if we have a heading structure sorry for all the console messages um i think i can get that with a web aim toolbar right i usually don't use it but i think i can use it here um structure so they have a Ooh, this is too much visual information. I'm gonna turn some of it off. Yeah, this is hard to translate all this visual information we're looking at now. Um, I'm gonna close that again. No way, a web aim toolbar. So you can check out the header structure for yourself, but I, I'm gonna guess there are some things that could be improved there. Um, just gonna pick one quickly. Okay, so the text at the white the what text at the top that's the actual logo that says the White House. You would expect it to be the the first heading of the page, but it's not. Um, then there's this SVG. Also not. Yeah. Also not a heading. It is nice to see that there's a text near this image that says uh, that has the class uh, screen reader text. So accessibility has been a uh, consideration. Uh, so that's really good. So they did think about, hey, how do, do, we, do we add text to this SVG? How do we make sure this, uh, this link is not an empty link? Um, and that's how they did it, by adding some, uh, some screen reader only text. And you also see this area label on the navigation. Which navigation is that? Is that the whole top bar? Yep. So that's good. They did think about accessibility. I mean, there's stuff they could improve, but uh, they at least are considering accessibility. So I'm gonna pick something else that looks like a heading. Get the latest from the White House. That's the H1, okay. So that's weird. Uh, usually the H1, the, the heading number one, is um, it's like the most, in most important message you wanna tell people. What is this page? What is this page called? So if you look at your, your tab in the top corner, it says the White House. That's a logical name for this page. It's a logical title. But what did they did they put in the H1? They said, get the latest from the White House. Well, that's not what this page is about. That's, that's certainly not what this page is about. So this could be like part of the page. So it would be an H2, but H1 is not really correct. So the administration then. That's an H2. Okay, so technically, if we look at heading structure, I'm gonna assume we didn't miss any headings because that makes it even more complicated. But if if get the latest from the White House is H1, then the administration is H2. So hierarchically, it would be under that, which makes no sense. Um, but if it would be all about the White House, then it would make sense. Then we have here an H2 called the White House, which is actually the history of the White House. So I would put something more in that H2 because just the White House could be any heading on the page. It's what the whole page is about. And then we have this, uh, hopefully newsletter. That's a whole section that doesn't have a heading in it, I guess. There's like this SVG to the left. There's a Stack of diffs. Um, oh, the stay connected is also an H2. That's interesting. So stay connected is an H2. It looks completely different, doesn't look like heading, but it is actually. So what would I change? I would uh, probably make the White House, the one at the top, an H1. The thing that is now an H1, I would make an H2. And the thing about the history of the White House, I would make it a clearer text to make make certain that people st understand that it's about the history. Um, and this is not the success message we got before. There's a hidden piece of code here. They, they are no longer using it. It also said uh, H2 with thanks for signing up. Yeah, that's certainly not an H2. So then we still have the footer. Is there also a heading in the footer maybe? We have that sometimes. So I'm just scanning the code here. Ooh, SVG code. Container, row, footer, wrapper. Going through this quickly. I don't think there are any headings in the footer, but you could add a heading to the footer as well because it's its own section. 
Yeah, so uh, the titles feel like they should sit in one heading element with a span for styling instead of a P and a heading element. Yeah, exactly. So they, they made two parts. Um, yeah, I think the history of the White House is the best example for that. So they made this into two parts where only the White House is the heading and the history of is in a different element, making it smaller and visually less less uh, apparent. So visually that's logical, but it would structurally be more logical if they put the whole text in a heading and then added another element around the history of, just to, to keep it simple, because the history of is <laughs> kind of important part here. Um, okay, so we have these links at the bottom. They don't seem very specific, so I'm not gonna spend too much time. I'm just gonna check the social media links because they are images and images can go wrong. We see that very often. And they do, of course. Oh no, wait, 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 wait. What did they do? Ah, okay, so this is kind of strange. Um, so they have a link. And the thing is, if you put an, an image inside a link and the image has no description, uh, then the image has no name. So that's the accessible name we mentioned before. And then if the image has no name, then the link has no name. So it's like it's an empty link. But what they do, they added a span with screen reader only text. So that's text that's visually hidden, but a screen reader can still find it. And Google SEO can find it as well, for example. And then in the screen reader span, uh, they said Instagram. So they added the alternative text inside the uh, span. And also the text opens in a new window. Um, because uh, it has a target of blank. So that's a perfectly fine way to approach this. So they have the Twitter. Yeah, so that all looks good. I'm not gonna check it any further. The next thing we wanna check, I, I like this, is the Espanol link. Um, why do I find it interesting? Well, it's an actual link. Often you have like these language pickers and you get a select or some custom pop-up thingy that's probably gonna mess up keyboard navigation. I'm sorry, but they usually do. Uh, but in this case, it's just a link and that's good because it is a link, it just goes to another uh, URL. It's whitehouse.gov slash ES, so for the Spanish version. Interesting thing is that they tagged the, the language as ES-MX, so I think that's uh, Spanish, but uh, Mexican Spanish. I don't know Spanish enough to, to tell the difference, but I'm gonna assume they, they keep this in mind. And uh, I think there's something, but I gotta look it up, MDM Anchor big part of my job is looking things up. I think there's something they could have improved. Um, this one. So what they do, do right, I'm gonna show that first. So they set a language attribute, which is really good because the content of this link, I don't mean the page behind it, but, but the actual text that's in there now says Espanol. And uh, that's not English. So they marked it up as Spanish. Uh, Mexican Spanish, but could have been just Spanish. Um, that's correct because Espanol is a Spanish word. If it were English, it would just say Spanish. But what they could have added as well is uh, some information about the page behind the link, the link, um, the page it refers to. And they have this uh, attribute called uh, hreflang, I guess I should pronounce it. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to share this even looking up stuff in MDM is very useful. Um, it says it hints at the human language of the linked URL. No built-in functionality. Allowed values are the same as the global lang attribute. So you can put the same short codes in there. Um, and you click it, you go to the Spanish version. And the Spanish version is nice because it says La Casa Blanca. I never knew that was the official name for the White House in Spanish. I mean, it's logical when you translate it, but apparently that's uh, that's how they call it. And when you scroll down, it's all seems all Spanish to me. I'm not gonna pronounce it. I think that's a bad idea. Here it also says La Casa Blanca, so I'm gonna guess that they are pretty consistent with that. The only funny thing is when you get to the mysterious um, newsletter, the logo still says the White House. So it's not completely consistent, but they're doing pretty good. Oh, the address is also still the White House, so don't send your mail to La Casa Blanca, send it to the White House. 
Um, and I'm just gonna go check one more thing. I'm gonna check now. Yeah, if you look at the uh, HTML tag, you see that it also has a language attribute and it also says uh, ES-MX. Uh, so the whole content of this page is marked up as, hey, this is Spanish, Mexican Spanish. And now we can go back to the link that sends us back to the English version. And it also says, hey, the word English is English and not Spanish. So they're pretty good with that. Um, and they, they look even at small details. I know not, I don't know everything about internationalization, but here even the, the U in menu, uh, they added an accent just to make clear that it's, hey, it's in a different language. So it's, it's pretty consistent. So we see these, these small things like a logo that they didn't change and maybe the address, I don't know if they should change it or not. It doesn't matter that much. Um, another thing is also interesting. Did they change the text for these, the screen reader text for the social media, for example? They did. So it's Instagram and it doesn't say it opens in a new window. Um, but it says it in Spanish, so that's pretty consistent. It's something that people often forget. When you translate your content, this includes the content that's not visually uh, apparent right away. So uh, that's pretty good. Did we have labels somewhere else, maybe in the menu? Or where did we? I remember seeing it somewhere in the code. I'm just gonna do a search. So I'm just gonna search for area label, which is, oh yeah. So even the, the contrast button um, has also in the code uh, Spanish. So that's really good. Um, that's the way it should be. Um, so we got two things. Uh, distinction is with grammar usage and local vocabulary. Yeah, I think there's a difference between uh, Mexican Spanish and Spanish Spanish, for example. Uh, it's like Flemish and Dutch, for example, or British English and American English. You've got some words that may even have different meaning. Um, so it's logical, but I'm, I'm not able to check this. Although it's not within my capabilities right now. Um, and the benefit of using ref, uh, href language, do assistive technologies use it? I'm not sure if they use it right now. Um, is it pronounced? Maybe I can check quickly. I think I can check with, I have to tr uh, start a different browser because I would like to use NVDA. And the MV80 screen reader works best with Google Chrome. Camera Camera fail. Fail. And it starts some random URL. Slash, 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 I'm gonna press control a lot because that silences that silences <laughs> that silences the page. English link. So th the first piece of assistive technology that I try. Uh, NVDA screen reader uh, does not do anything with the with the, with the HF language. What I do know is that the normal language attribute, uh, for example, voiceover can make use of this sometimes, um, which is really nice because you're reading a piece of text with one voice, and then when the language changes, the 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 whole sound or speech engine, whatever you call it, is a rule here. Uh, sometimes Ru is with us. Ru is, uh, knows a lot about these uh, silence NVDA. Uh, Ru knows a lot about speech engines. Uh, Ru van Gils, he's a Belgian uh, guy. You can also find him on Twitter, for example. He knows a lot about speech engines. And uh, one of the things they do sometimes is switch the language when your page switches language. And that's really useful because having English pronounced by a Dutch speech engine is pretty much useless, just like the other way around. Um, it can be pretty funny sometimes, but useful pretty much never. So set your language. I'm gonna close NVDA again. This was just a quick test to see if NVDA does something. Doesn't mean that there are no uh, pieces of existing of uh, assistive technology that use it, but at least NVDA doesn't. Um, so we've done a quick scan of the front page. I guess that the biggest finds were the heading structure, get rid of the annoying widget. I could really go without widgets. A world without accessibility widgets would be perfectly fine. It would be some people without a job because they wouldn't be building widgets, um, but otherwise not a big difference. 
Uh, I'm going to contact us. And why am I checking this page? Well, contact pages also have a lot of forms. And um, this is at normal zoom. I zoom in. It's just going to stay centered. OK. Um, contact pages have a lot of forms. And I'm sorry to say, but people do a lot of bad things with forms. And uh, yes, thanks, Sophie. My sound works really well now. I'm, I'm happy about that. I, I took some effort to fix it, finally. Uh, last two recordings were not as good. So um, so it's a big page that says contact us with lots of white space, which um, can make it easy for people that zoom in uh, to miss things. So uh, I use browser zooming, you know, like this. Anybody can do this with on Windows Control Plus and Control Minus. But you also have pieces of software, also assistive technology, where you can zoom in on a section of the screen. And when there's so much uh, space between your form and uh, accessibility widgets on one side and uh, social sharing on the other side, assume that people who zoom in on the form are going to miss these things. I mean, there's so much white space. Why would you expect anything else to be on the other side? Um, I don't know. There's not much interesting there. I'm also wondering uh, high contrast they're going to show. Just going to check quickly the contrast of these social media thingies. I think it's the same contrast that we have with the placeholder. I know I am picking the wrong color because I'm picking the foreground as the background and the background as the foreground, but it doesn't matter because it's a ratio and it goes two ways. Uh, and it's 4.1. Um, so that's enough for an image because an image needs to be 3.0 to 1. Um, but it's not really a high contrast. So don't expect people to see details. And I could say, the Facebook logo is an uh, image of text, so that's dangerous dangerous territory. They're really pushing the edge on, on these little blue on blue things. But let's uh, let's focus on um, on the contact form. Again, we see these stars. I can zoom in a lot because it doesn't matter. Um, we see these stars, so normal convention would say, uh, at least from the world of type, not digital type, but physical type, that if you see a star then somewhere down below should be a reference to that star. Um, there is not. So I'm pretty sure in this case star means required, but it doesn't show. Nobody tells me what is required or not except this mysterious star. So message type, select an item. Contact the president, help with federal agency, question about the website. Yeah, we have some questions, but we're not going to type it in here. Um, then this one goes up, probably because we don't have enough space. Is that so? If I do this, go yeah. So that's my browser being smart. The first name is required. Middle name is not required. Last name is required again. So checking in the code if that's the same. Um, yeah, indeed, the first name is required. Middle name not required, max length of 50. So if you have a long middle name, I think 50 should be fine. And the last name, a max length of 80 even, and um, required, okay. So what's interesting to see is I do see a form, but no, no form grouping of any kind, I guess. Is there any grouping below? No, probably not. So we're just gonna check some more suffix. You can pick one. Ooh, Roman numbers. I've never seen somebody use Roman numbers as a, su as a suffix, but then again, maybe in the US. Um, shouldn't it be required is true? No, it doesn't really matter how you, there, there are multiple ways to, uh, to use the required attribute. Um, required can even be set like this. So um, a lot of attributes in HTML for example, a class name or an ID, you say ID is, and you do use these quotation marks or apostrophes, I don't know what you want to call them, and you put in an, uh, an attribute value. Um, but there are some attributes that don't need these. I, I think they're called Boolean attributes. The 25 Boolean attributes of HTML, sounds good. Okay, now I want to see Boolean. I'm gonna want an MDN link for this. I, I think MDN is a great resource for a lot of things. Boolean attributes. 
some content, e.g. required, hey, it's the first example, perfect, are called, uh, some content attributes are called Boolean attributes. Uh, if a Boolean attribute is present, its value is true, and if it's absent, its value is false. So you can pick either, either if you want to set it to false or just want to remove it altogether. And it makes things really easy. And the way your browser shows it is not necessarily how the, the programmer made it. Um, so suffix, pronoun, this is also interesting. Um, it's not required to add a pronoun, but if you want to add one like she slash her, he slash him, they slash them, other or prefer not to share, you can pick it. I'm not sure why there is a prefer not to share when the whole field is not required. Feels like a strange combination. Um, and I'm not a specialist on, on how to make the best uh, inclusive uh, form fields with stuff like this, but this is pretty strange. Uh, you have to enter both email and phone number. Although I don't get a mouse over on this one. Is it also required? Yeah. And uh, country, United States. I yeah, guess not. Can I select the Netherlands? Yeah. Street is also required. A city is required. A message, though, is not required. So that's nice. And keep me posted with regular updates from the White House with this really tiny checkbox. Um, I don't know about international rules, but I think in the Netherlands, you're not allowed to check this by default. Like it's a thing that you see in web shops, like stores on the web. Um, if you buy something, they're not allowed to sign you in for a newsletter right away. Maybe this is different because you're contacting somebody, but also like really tiny checkbox what's what size is that checkbox uh, does it say on the computed values i'm not sure maybe in layout oh here it says it's nine by nine <laughs> so this checkbox is nine by nine uh, pixels prefer not to share is probably there because it's not clear which fields are required. That sounds really, uh, yeah, that's probably it, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, so they have this checkbox and I'm glad you can click the label because the checkbox itself is, is really tiny. Um, I'm gonna unclick it, I'm gonna press send and then it jumps up and it shows me that all these things are required. Um, I'm just gonna put in some stuff because I really want to know what happens so we're we're gonna question about the website and uh, i'm a mister or an other oh you can also pick different prefixes i won't no prefix for me my first name is like my last name not interesting suffix not required email i put in dashes let's see what they do with dashes i have no idea what you would like to say this one is now also highlighted it's not very clear. Um, this is also a <laughs> wake cake issue, uh, an inclusive design issue, because it's using color to make clear that something's missing. It went from dark blue or black to red. Um, incredibly easy to miss. Uh, of course, they would say, hey, but we also added a border. So you could see from the border, I don't know what a border means. I mean. They are not communicating an error state here. This is, uh, I would call this bad design. And apparently it's required after all. Yeah, so in the code it is required, but we are missing our little star. Oh, too bad. Okay, I'm gonna send it again, just to see what happens. Oh, the email was not okay. Anything else? See, and, and did, at this point, I could so easily skip the, the message um, because it's not clear that it's, that it's in, a, in an error state. So I'm gonna send it. What happens? I jump to the bottom of the page. Thank you for your submission. And I'm gonna bet it's the same situation as before. Yeah, it's just a paragraph. So there's no, um, no ARIA live or something and it's not being announced. And at least this time, contact us is the H1 of the page. So contact us is a logical title for the page and they are using it. So that's better. Um, so they accepted our submission with all the dashes and everything. 
I'm very curious where the social icons are in the tab order. So I'm gonna check that out. Tabbing, 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 tabbing. We're at the footer now. wh.gov, tab again. I think I'm outside of the page. Oh, I went to the top button. Oh, jump to top is like the last thing on the page. And then I press tab again. And now I'm outside of the page. Okay, so then I'm going backwards. So top is the last thing. That's good. I'm gonna start from the top again. So I'm now focused on skip to content. I, I wanna see how the, the icons on the site work. Toggle high contrast, toggle large font size. I think we are now again on the mysterious logo that doesn't have a focus state, then the logo in the middle, then the menu, then the search functionality. We go to the form there with the mystery newsletter spammy thing. And now the focus is on the footer again. Okay, so these these social media icons on the side, I don't think I don't think I can reach them with the keyboards. Hey Andy, thanks for joining us. Um oh yeah, and there we see why. I'm just gonna zoom in. So there's this little aside thing with three social media icons. One is I guess shared to Facebook, one is shared to Twitter, and maybe the other is copy link or something. Click to copy the page URL. I'm not sure how many people do use that, but I'm gonna assume somebody has tested that. And these links cannot be reached by keyboard. And why can they not be reached by keyboard? Well, we can see it in the code. Um, the link has a, an attribute, which is not a Boolean attribute because it has the value of minus one. And the attribute is called a tab index. Tab index minus one means take this element out of my tab order. This means hide it for keyboard users. This means don't, don't use minus one. You're hiding stuff for people, unless you have a really good reason for this. I don't think they have in this case. Um, don't hide it, there's no, no reason for it. I mean, it is a silly widget. There's like, it's almost a duplicate of the bottom. There's Facebook and Twitter there as well. But then at the bottom they have Instagram and YouTube. And then on the side they have this Ooh, animation. So th these links are hidden. A lot of people cannot use them. Keyboard users cannot use them. Uh, people who use assistive technology, which Austin make use of the keyboard API, uh, they can all not also not use these links. So this is uh, a bad practice. And um, if this were a WCAG inspection, so following the rules, I could probably find something to uh, to fill them on here. Um, because it's not a, a reachable by keyboard. And it's also strange because it is a link, but it has a roll of button. So it's this weird, um, weird construction. Uh, I'll get back to that as in a second, Andy. Um, you have a link, which has a roll of link because in Aria you can give something a roll and then it communicates, hey, I am whatever this is. So by default, a link is communicated as a link. If you use a screen reader, the thing we mentioned before, it's gonna approach this and say, hey, this is a link. But because it says roll button, it will think it is a button. Which is sort of logical because it, it performs an action, it doesn't navigate, but then you could use a button in the first place. So this is really confusing. You cannot reach it by keyboard. Um, so uh, the difference between a button and a link is also that, can I open it in a new tab, for example? Uh, I right click this and yeah, there's so many things wrong. I, it's hard to start here. Um, so you have a link element, an anchor element without a URL. There's no href attribute. So technically it's not a valid link, but then you give it a roll button. So it's not performed to navigate anyway. It's meant to perform an action, but you cannot perform the action by keyboard. Um, and does it even have an accessible name then? It does have a title. When it's activated, it says copied. I'm gonna inspect it on the accessibility tab just to check. Yeah, and the, the accessible name is 
https double <laughs> https colon slash slash www.whitehouse.gov slash contact slash um okay so it doesn't have a, a proper accessible name either so the, these things are a mess i'm guessing as this this whole page is based on uh wordpress which I, we didn't mention but uh I've, I've read about it and i think you can see it from the code as well um can we see somewhere here be saying it's yeah so here you see it as well so if you look at the head of the page and you see it has a theme um the theme is in a subfolder called wp slash uh, wp dash content why because it's a wordpress site so these social sharing icons are probably a wordpress extension and uh, i can tell you it's not accessible so we we've seen several issues here what happens when i click the tweet bird oh i get a pop-up so that's sort of a url but also not um and facebook also sort of a url but maybe okay so this this whole widget is an issue so the best thing we can do with stuff that doesn't work is remove it make everybody happy um so we just got the question from andy do you do accessibility checks as a service yeah i also do audits uh, as a as a consultant i would say um feel free to send me a message on twitter or i don't know can you contact somebody on twitch probably if you can contact me anymore anywhere on my twitch profile feel free otherwise uh, twitter or my website uh, feel free to check it out um i'm curious to hear what this is about so we send a contact message we checked some of the widgets uh, is there anything we want to check shall we have a click look at least at the accessibility statement because somebody said you can only call them so i'm going to zoom out a bit to make it reading easier for me um so they are aiming for wcag 2.1 version double a which is pretty good or level double a so they they have some ambitions there um so the white house welcomes comments on how to improve the site's accessibility for users with its with disabilities and you can call them indeed so through switchboard uh then they have a special phone numbers for those who are hearing impaired they have a comment line and they have the visitors offer so th i i guess these this is the one for the hearing impaired okay but you have to call them which is um not very modern i guess um yeah i i don't like calling uh, it's not just a thing about hearing or being able to hear or I don't know there there are many reasons why people don't call um and i'm one of them <laughs> i'm one of the people who doesn't like it so just giving a phone number as an option is uh, pretty limited um so any any questions from the chat is there anything else you want to want to see about this website i mean we could go through every page but i already spent more than an hour on these two pages that's that's how we can go um yeah anything let me know i'm just gonna click uh, let's say COVID. if you want to give examples of bad and inaccessible code mailing is easier yes sophie that's true try try calling through some html code say hey uh, it's just a smaller than body bigger no it's not gonna work um, so here the biden harris plan to beat COVID 19 so they're not just going to make it less they're going to beat it actually wow so there's this plan and you can see it's pretty well marked up because you just have these these paragraphs and you have lists and that makes it easy to read i'm going to see what they did with this big t here it's uh oh yeah so they just added this in the css i think which is good so it's just the normal text that starts with a t but visually the t is really big um landmarks in uh yeah that's that's an extension actually i've got it here as well i think is it this one no not a translator um i don't have it in my top bar anymore you there's actually an extension where you can uh, inspect the landmarks and you can also navigate by landmark and if you use uh, mac os um, and you use voiceover you can really easily without installing anything you can get a list of landmarks uh, because voiceover users can make use of landmarks to navigate the page so uh, a lot of people use headings to navigate a page um, but landmarks are also an option and they are 
uh, less well supported and less well implemented but i think the idea of landmarks is really nice uh, it's it's like uh, an alternative also to skip links because you can skip to the main content by just saying hey i want to go to the main landmark so what else okay what what stands out for me this is a pretty big page that it has no headings not something you can fail it on but would be nice then there's this quote don't tell me they made this a heading they could have no it's just a big 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 quote and it's marked up as a figure i'm not sure why this is a figure so you see they use the html element figure i'm gonna inspect it with the uh, accessibility inspector as well that gives me some impression about yeah so here it also says what i would expect uh there's an accessibility tab in the expect the in the inspector in Firefox and it says figures with optional captions should be labeled. So they use the figure element, but there is no image here. So this is like a misuse of semantics. You when you use a figure element, and then we sort of get into my my <laughs> article about semantics anyway. If you use a figure element, you're basically saying, hey, there should be an image here. You're you're calling your intentions. You say, hey, I want to put an image here, but there is no image here. So you're communicating to people, hey, there's an image, but there is no image. So um, yeah, somebody also saying, shouldn't a figure have a fake caption? That's a way of providing some alternative text, but there's not even a figure here. So this is like misuse. Um, maybe it was easier for their markup. They had something to do like, have this thing pop out and they usually do it with fig figures and they thought hey why not put a quote in there then it's get bigger and then it gets bigger but your visual needs are not a reason to misuse html semantics structure of the page first start with your html and then afterwards you fix the visual part that's how it should work um figure doesn't have to have an image i think it can be a code example or other media. Oh, I have to check about that. Um, how about, um, or um, I'm gonna get this. Is this the one I want? Probably not. I'm gonna try dive into a resource. That's a, a bit, a little bit into the specification. Accessible name. Figure. Oh yeah, I think you are right. A figure. Sh I'm gonna zoom out a bit because the side menu is gonna take a lot of space. So uh, this is uh, Core Am. This is about accessible roles, and the figure has the role of a system grouping. So it can be a group, um, but it is more specific. Let's see what it says when I click through figure it's a role it's a perceived section of content that typically contains a graphical document images code snippets or example text the parts of a figure may be user navigable navig navigable yeah so authors should provide a reference to the figure from the main text but the figure need not displayed at the same location as the referencing element authors may reference okay so It doesn't say must and that's like this this very important keyword if the specification says must then then you're screwed basically if you don't um it only says may and should and typically contains um so technically they can probably get away with this um but putting a quote in there i've i've never seen that before um so it can be graphical document an image a code snippet as was mentioned in the chat as an example as well or example text but just a quote example is it, do they see this as example text i think this is i know americans like the word liberty but they're taking a bit too much liberty by using a figure for this one i wouldn't do this i think this is a bit um bit dangerous to use it in this way let's put it like that so i i probably you know you you, you cannot fail it for being wrong html but it uh, doesn't really uh, align with the intent of the element so even more text more texts then we have a big image download the pdf what pdf oh the one that's named above read the national strategy for the COVID 19 response and pandemic preparedness 
Okay, so this is interesting. You can download a PDF. I'm not gonna test a PDF. PDFs are often inaccessible. I'm not gonna test this one. I'm not gonna make assumptions either. Just gonna say not gonna test it. And then again, stay connected. So we have the same footer. So we saw some stuff in this page as well. Then there's national strategies that uh, I wanna see it in the inspector. Wondering if this is actual text, yes. Um, it is actual text, but not a heading, of course. This could have been a heading. Then the image on the in the back. This is also interesting. Uh, you know, I, I told you I'm tired. I just keep talking. Um, so they have this image, which is a background image, and it's very, very decorative. It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't even have to do anything with COVID-19. Um, but it does have an alt text. So the alternative text for this image is the north facade of the White House at sunrise. It has nothing to do with the entire page. Um, I can delete this image and <laughs> nobody would care. But they did give it an alt text. I would say if it's such a decorative image, you can have the alt attribute empty. This would hide it for, assist, uh, for assistive technology and that would be fine. They could keep it like that. And then download the PDF. Uh, downloading is a <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, download is usually a URL. So they made this a link, and that's fine. Um, but the funny thing is they added the class BTN, which means it's looking like a button, even though it's a download link. Um, also interesting, read the national strategy for the COVID-19 response and pandemic preparedness. They thought, yeah, that's a heading. I don't know. That's not a heading in, in my head. Uh, I wouldn't structure it. It's also with a class H1 large, so it's a heading level two that should like should look like a level <laughs> level one heading. Um, what's to be said? Uh, I have to stop somewhere. I, I I need to thank you all. If there's any questions left in the chat, please ask them now because I've got to stop somewhere. I'm just gonna check all the pages if nobody stops me, and I really need my sleep more than streaming right now. So if there's anything, let me know. Uh, I think the general conclusion for the White House website is uh, they're doing pretty well. Uh, a lot of websites do a lot worse than this. There are some things that could be improved, but then again, this is the first version that we see. Uh, I don't know what the plans are. I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot more content as well. I looked earlier today, going back to the front page now, um, about the White House is like, was it about the White House? I, I clicked a page earlier and it had like three lines of text and I was like, okay, this is clearly under construction. Um, that's not the case anymore. So they, they are progressing. Um, the grounds, what does it say about the grounds? Same image. Yeah, see, so they have some more content. But again, uh, I have to quit. I have to quit somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna say good night because it's night in my time zone. Uh, enjoy your day if it's not night for you. Um, yeah, as Sophie says, it's it's still early. Let's check back in six months. Are they gonna change a lot? I don't know, let's find out. We have a good base to work from and some things to improve. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, thank you for the questions. Thank you for the White House website to check. We've also checked the, the older ones before, so um, we could even compare someday. Um, but thank you very much, and I hope to see some improvements on this very quick. And uh, hopefully next week we have a, a guest again with streaming. And um, see you then. Bye-bye.